so this isn't going to be a contentious video at all. This video was made possible by patrons like Asaf Y. Cheers Asaf! If you sign up now you can get an exclusive TLDR lanyard absolutely free. Find out more at the end of this video. The Prime Minister of a country is a figure to be looked up to as a leader, followed as a politician, ridiculed as a failure and critiqued as a public servant. Depending on which side of the aisle you fall on, you might find yourself loving or hating some of these people, but who's the best British Prime Minister? Well, fortunately we have an answer. Well, two answers. Firstly, Professor Kevin Theakson of the University of Leeds asked 93 academics working at 44 UK universities to score every post-war Prime Minister on a scale of 1 to 10. They then went deeper into modern Prime Ministers, ranking their impact across five different factors. Then, to add to the fun, we also have a second, less scientific metric. We then asked our audience which Prime Minister was the best across each of these five categories to create a viewer ranking. Let's start with the experts, though as no offence to you guys, but I do trust the academic slightly more than a crowd of people who listen to mine, or usually Jack's, voice for fun. Let's start with the first of the five categories and look at all of the PM since Thatcher. According to the experts, the Prime Minister with the greatest impact on society is Tony Blair, with Brown being the only other to receive a positive rating. At the bottom of the list, with a negative 67, was Thatcher. So, it's clear that the academics highly rate the new Labour project, at least on its ability to change society. This could be related to legislation such as the Civil Partnership Act, and while it took another decade for gay marriage to be adopted, it did shift us towards a more tolerant society, especially in the wake of Thatcher's Section 28, something that was also repealed by New Labour. Another potential reason why New Labour have been seen as a positive on its impact on society is likely to do with its ability to help those that are worse off. New Labour were able to reduce child poverty massively with policies such as Sure Start, which aimed to give all children the best start in life possible, maternity pay, paternity pay and the national minimum wage, further demonstrating their contributions to improving society. The next category is impact on the British economy, and for that one of the highest scores also goes to Blair, with 70 out of 100, with him followed by Brown and Thatcher. At the bottom though is Cameron, with a negative 55. It's likely that Blair's at the top of this list due to his third way route of appeasing both sides. The third way was an attempt by Blair and New Labour to find a middle ground between socialism and capitalism. Blair famously did not reverse Thatcher's privatisation policies, almost accepting the way he found things. He did take some big steps though, including making the Bank of England independent and refusing to join the Euro. Both policies have endured past his premiership and it seems that the academics have rated these decisions very highly indeed. Up next we have the Prime Minister's impact on foreign policy and Britain's place on the world stage, and the highest scorer is Thatcher with a 36, with Brown getting 29 and Major getting 14, and the lowest scorer here being May with a negative 78. Thatcher being at the top likely is down to her infamous actions in relation to the attempted capture of the Falkland Islands by Argentina. Thatcher argued that Britain's victory was a victory of democracy over tyranny, as Argentina at the time was led by a dictator. Perhaps this was why the academics rated her so highly. Or perhaps it was due to her negotiations with the EEC. In 1984, Thatcher was successful at negotiating a 66% decrease in the UK's financial contributions to the bloc. This was on top of her very vocal opposition to the expansion of the EEC's responsibilities. The next category examines the leaders' impact on their respective political parties and sees Blair and Thatcher fight it out for the top spot with 29 and 26 respectively. The worst for their party? Well, that goes to May, with a negative 78. For both Blair and Thatcher, prior to their elevation to party leader, their parties were not doing well. Prior to Thatcher, the Conservatives had only been in power for four out of the last 15 years, and this four years was only really with a small majority and had been fraught with financial troubles. Similarly, when Blair came to power in 1997, his party had been out of power for 18 years. While other Prime Ministers may have won elections, Blair and Thatcher redefined their party in a way that kept them winning elections and kept them in number 10 for more than a decade. The final category considers the impact each Prime Minister had on the country's democracy and constitution. This time the high scorer is Blair, with him and Brown the only two positive scorers. On the other end of the spectrum we have, again, May with negative 72. To be fair, both Blair and Brown presided over some of the biggest constitutional changes for many, many decades. 
Not only did they oversee devolution to Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland and a number of regions such as London, they also reformed the House of Lords and introduced legislation such as the Human Rights Act. Together these changed the way the UK functions and seriously changed the UK's constitutional makeup. If we combine these rankings then you get an overall mean score out of 10 with 10 unsurprisingly being the top score. Weirdly enough though there's a tie for last place with both of them scoring 2.3 out of 10. In joint last we have Theresa May and Anthony Eden. In 12th is Douglas Hume, then David Cameron and Edward Heath. Then there's a three-way tie for 7th with James Callaghan, Winston Churchill and John Major all scoring 5.1 out of 10. Just missing out on the top 5 is Gordon Brown who was beaten by the Harolds, Macmillan and Wilson. In the bronze position is Tony Blair scoring 7.7. Beating him by just 0.1 points and scoring 7.8 is Margaret Thatcher making the best post-war Prime Minister, Clement Attlee, with a clear lead of 8.3 out of 10. Attlee was a clear winner, not only in this 2021 poll, but also in the equivalent 2016, 2010 and 2004 polls, as the only Prime Minister to score above 8 in any of the surveys. Another notable thing when looking across the years is the position of Winston Churchill, scoring 7.9 in the original survey and dropping year on year to 5.1 in the 2021 edition, with a big drop occurring between 2004 and 2010. While we don't know for sure, it's possible that this shift is related to Churchill's broader societal reckoning, with many beginning to question some of the troubling parts of Churchill's record for the first time, and asking if he was a great man. That's for you to decide, but it could have shaped the academic's opinion here. Also looking across the years, Eden must be pleased to have some company at the bottom of the table, with May being the only other PM to ever score below 3. In fact, May scored badly across the board, with her getting negative scores in all five categories, with a negative 78 for her impact on foreign policy and her party. So that's what the experts had to say, but what did Michael say about experts again? Anyway, what about our audience? What did they have to say? Well, more than 3,000 viewers responded to the survey we put online, and we have some results. It's worth caveating this though by saying that our audience, which tends to be younger, doesn't necessarily know all the PMs, and as such there may be bias towards the newer leaders, although that's not fully true. We know that because we asked respondents which Prime Ministers they didn't know enough about to judge, and man this data is interesting just on its own. Now, the results might not be shocking. For instance, it makes sense that despite how long ago he ruled, lots of people know Churchill. And it also makes sense that barely anyone knows Douglas Hume, because, well, he was Prime Minister for less than a year before most of you were born. But the data's still interesting, showing a whole group of leaders people aren't familiar with pre-Thatcher, as well as a couple of others that stand out. Both Major and Brown, relatively unknown considering how recent they were in number 10. Anyway, here's how the TLDR audience ranked Prime Ministers based on their societal impact, with Attlee getting 37% of the votes, Churchill 28% and Thatcher 10%. When it comes to the economy, the audience put Thatcher at the top, earning 39% of the vote, compared to second place Attlee's 20% and third place Blair at 18%. Next, on foreign policy, the top scorer is Churchill, with a huge 46% of the vote, with Thatcher and Attlee coming in a distant second and third. When it comes to their party, TLDR viewers said Blair had the most positive impact, with Attlee and Thatcher coming in behind him. Finally, for democracy, the audience high scoring PM was Churchill, scoring 27%, closely followed by Blair with 21% and Attlee on 20%. Let's, for a moment, compare these results with the academics. Here we see that, well, neither group really rates Theresa May, with her audience somehow scoring her lower than even the academics. Others are also underrated, with Brown and Major both scoring lower, likely due to our audience's unfamiliarity. In contrast, Thatcher is rated a lot higher by our audience, as is Cameron. When it comes to Blair, well, both sides seem pretty agreed on him. If we put all of our audience data together, then the overall league table looks like this, with Churchill at the top with 3,259 total votes, following him is Attlee in silver, Thatcher, bronze and Blair in fourth. Then there's a pretty big drop off as we get to less popular and less well known Prime Ministers, with May as the lowest scoring modern Prime Minister. So it seems that as expected our audience's list looks a little different from the experts, with the most notable divergence over Churchill, with our audience ranking him far higher than the academics, with Cameron also doing better. 
Now, this comparison isn't fair as it's biased towards more famous and recent Prime Ministers, but it's interesting to see how leaders are popularly perceived when compared to academics who scrutinise their policies and impacts. But who do you agree with? Which Prime Minister is at the top of your list? Comment below to let us know. As I said at the start of the video, we're running a Patreon promotion whereby every Patreon paying more than $5 a month can get an absolutely free, never for sale lanyard. To claim yours, just sign up to the TLDR Patreon and then click the link to the store. Signing up not only snags you a lanyard, but also gets you other perks like early access to videos, exclusive live events, merch discounts and more. Find out what you can get and sign up by clicking the link in the description below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible.